Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG Games, and I'm going to be continuing my introduction into Blender series. So in the first tutorial, we learned about the interface and learned how some of these buttons we can use to make our object. For example, and we also learned how to navigate around our screen, around our scene. Um, if you didn't watch that video, it's middle mouse rotates around, shift middle mouse pans around, and then mouse wheel zooms in and out. At least that's the default setting. In the last tutorial, we learned about the differences between Blender Render and Cycles Render. So basically, we learned how to how these engines differ and the pros and cons of each. So now let's get into today's tutorial on the Node Editor. Now the Node Editor can be used to create textures. It can be used to composite to scenes together. It can be used to create materials. There's a bunch of stuff you can do just using the node editor and that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, the compositing and the texture making is not nece necessary to know but the node editor is somewhat necessary to know because you can do what the node editor does right here but you can only make certain materials that I'm about to show you um, with the node editor. So I'm going to go into file and I'm going to open up two materials. This is a simpler one, it's just a few nodes. Now that might confuse you, you're like, wait, that's not a few nodes. But no, that is the node system. It has colors and all that stuff. A lot of this stuff is duplicated though, so it's not that bad. And you'll see it's just orange right here, but that's the point. So now if I shift Z, you can see we have this really nice looking um, copper material. And it's really high quality. And all of it has like normal stuff and it looks really cool. So that's a, the simpler one. Now this is the more complex one. The crack and glow. Yes, I have to zoom out a long ways. And all the controls are the same in the node editor that they are in the 3D view. And now it has this, this green thing. So if I shift Z here, this is a much more complicated material. There are no textures in this. This is all no, um, like noise based. And that's a really cool texture. And if you'll notice, these lines are actually emissive. They actually emit light. So that's cool. So now I'm not going to make something that um, complex, but I'm just going to show you how to get started with the node editor. So now let's, the easiest way to get to the node editor is to go up here and then click on compositing. And that will pull up this. Now you don't want render layers, you want the material. And if we click on the material, you can see that, well, that's what it, the material looks like. It's just a diffuse shader mixed with a glossy shader, but it's in a node form. And so I'm going to hit Shift Z to go into render mode down here. Now, now let's get into making a new material. So I'm going to hit plus, and you'll see we have this. Now, there's something really important you should know about the node editor. And the thing is that each input output node can go to. You can have as many of these output nodes as you want. You could have 20 of these. You can only take one input node. And inputs can't go to inputs, and outputs can't go to outputs. But it's like magnets. North doesn't attract, north attracts south, but north can't go with north, and south can't go with south. So, so this becomes a problem if we try to make a material using um, the mix shader. So I'm going to hit, add a new shader. I'm going to use a translucent. And I'm going to drag that onto the surface, but you'll notice that we can't do both of them at the same time. It won't let us. Um, and that's just a problem that Blender has. And it's a smart thing because now we can't add a bunch of stuff into one input and overload it. So there is a solution around it, and that is the mix shader. To add that, you can hit Shift A, shader, whoops, shader, mix shader. Drag the top one on the top, drag the bottom one on the bottom one and then connect it to the surface. Now you'll see we have this, and by changing this, it changes how much of the dif how much of the diffuse is used and how much of the translucency is used. So if we use something like 0.9, not, um, it will be have the fuse property, so we'll still get a shadow, but light will still pass through it, and that's really cool. So let's change the color, and let's make this like a green, or blue, like a white blue like that and like that 
And then we can play around with this. And I'm just going to keep that at white. I'm actually going to bump that all the way up to 100. Make this a little bit dark like that. So that's a pretty cool. Um, you can't really see the translucency. But cause, because there's well, no light source behind it. But you can kind of see it right here. It's transparent. I'm um, sorry about that. And so, yeah, let's say we wanted to add, let's say, some color to it. A really quick way around this is, like, some color around the edges, is to add a layer weight node. And that is inside of, uh, which one is it? Is it vector? Input, yes. We could go to layer weight. Now, for this, we actually need another mix shader. So I'm going to go to shader, mix shader, and put it right there. Now you notice that when we don't do the bottom output, it does that. So I'm going to bump this all the way down to zero. Actually, just keep it at that, because this Fresnel value will go into the factor. And we're going to change this to like 0.176. And now you'll see that we have a bunch of dark areas where light is not hitting it. And that's a really cool thing. But we can actually pass a color into that, so that's really cool. So I'm going to duplicate these nodes by hitting shift D and selecting all of them. And I'm going to move that into there. But then for this translucency color, um, right here, I'm going to make this like a green, like that. And so now you can see that we have this really cool looking material that we can use for a bunch. And there's dozens of things. You can even use image textures. So I'm going to actually create a new material and I'm going to add an image texture to this. But for image textures and for textures in general, you need to have a texture coordinates node. Now what that basically does is it finds where the object is and allows us to do stuff. So I'm going to move this over right here and then we hit shift A, um, texture, image texture, and put it right there. Then I'm going to get the generated, put it right there, and then drag the color into right there. Now you will see it turns pink. Do not worry, that just means that the texture is not there. That's the easiest way to say it. So I'm going to click open, and I found one, and it is pretty cool. Let me find it. There it is. And so now you can see that, well, we can't see anything. But that's because it's a really dark material. It's a really dark, um, I guess, texture. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A, and we are going to add, um, which one was it? Oh, yeah, we need a converter. I know what it's called, but I just don't know where it is. Where is it? Dead guy. Should have found it. RGB curves. Now before, and then we're just going to drag that action. And you can actually drag stuff on top of lines and they'll highlight. There we go. So you can actually play around with this and add more contrast. That's generally what I use it for, but for making stuff brighter, it's pretty easy. And you can see that it works pretty good. Now let's say that this isn't what you want. There's another way, like you see all these lines, that's we might not want that and maybe that's not what you want well there is another way around it now you can see that it doesn't show and that is because all of our texture stuff is messed up so I'm gonna go to texture um, input which one was it golly I can't find all these nodes that's another hard part is it? mapping the mapping node also helps so I'm gonna drag that in and you can see I can actually scale it down, scale it up, and so, so far, it's not working that well, so I don't know what's wrong. I'm just going to go back and add texture coordinate node, because that seemed to work best. And that's pretty cool, but let's say we wanted to add something like a texture over the top of it. That's actually not that hard to do. I'm going to select all three of these nodes, and then we hit G and move them up. And I'm going to move this off to the side. Then I'm going to add a different type of texture, and these are all generated textures. I'm going to add a noise texture. 
Now, if I now, I'm going to get this from here, and the factor of this I will push into a mix, and then I'll just have the color of this at black, and then I'll plug that color into a mix shader like this. And you can see that it's starting to come along. Now you can also scale these noise textures up. You can do all kinds of stuff. Now you can see nothing's there. And it's a lot of playing around, but that is just a basic intro. There's a bunch of different types of nodes. And if you can't find one, you can always hit space, I think. Nope, that doesn't work with this. So there's lots of different nodes that you can use and lots of cool little things you can use. So thanks for watching, guys. I really enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you.